All right, <laughs> we are live. Welcome door grow hackers to the door grow show. If you are a property management entrepreneur that wants to add doors, make a difference, increase revenue, help others impact lives, and you are interested in growing your business and life, and you are open to doing things a bit differently then you are a door grow hacker. Door grow hackers love the opportunities, daily variety, unique challenges and freedom that property management brings. Many in real estate think you're crazy for doing it. You think they're crazy for not because you realize that property management is the ultimate high trust gateway to real estate deals, relationships, and residual income. At DoorGrow, we are on a mission to transform property management businesses and their owners. We want to transform the industry, eliminate the BS, build awareness, change perception, expand the market, and help the best property management entrepreneurs win. I'm your host, property management growth expert, Jason Hull, the founder and CEO of DoorGrow. Now let's get into the show. And today I have a special guest, I am here hanging out with Chris Litster, the CEO of Buildium. Chris, welcome to the Door Grow Show. Hey, Jason, how are you? Great to, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm just flabbergasted by that opening, man. The energy, I can already feel it. It's going to be a great, great hour or so. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I put quite a bit of thought into that little uh, intro. So, it's great. Um, Fantastic. And yeah, we're pretty passionate about this. And, and, we, we want to champion sort of a cause here. So, well, Chris, I'm really excited to have you on. You, um, I love to get a little bit of background on you and how you kind of got connected to Buildium. Um, and so tell us, give us a little history here. Yeah, sure. So I've been with Buildium now for just over a little bit, uh, two and a half years. Um, I have been uh, in the SMB or the small business market space for, God, now it's upwards probably 15, 20 years. I'm getting a little bit older as we continue along. Uh, I was originally, I was, I've been in tech for a lot longer than that. Um, I was at IBM for a while, a couple other uh, tech uh, companies. Then I landed at Constant Contact in 2006, and I was with, it's an email marketing firm for small businesses like MailChimp and a couple of the other uh, players in that space. I was with Constant Contact for 10 years. Uh, I started with them. They were pretty small, and that went, and we grew them and, and scaled uh, with a great team at Constant Contact, and ultimately ended up selling them a couple, three years ago, selling Constant Contact. Uh, I took a year off to reacquaint myself with my wife and, and three boys, because uh, during that 10 years, you know, they kind of had the short end of the stick as we were building Constant Contact. And during that time off, I had the opportunity through different acquaintances and such to meet the former CEO and uh, one of the founders of Buildium, Michael Montero, who I know that you've had on this show. Mm -hmm. And Michael, at that point, was interested in just talking with folks who had scaled companies before uh, because Buildium was on the verge of that kind of inflection point of really where scaling and, and revenue growth was starting to really accelerate. And Michael and the team at that time, over the past 12 years or so, had grown Buildium to where it was. And now, because of our great product and great team and great customers, we were ready to, to go to the next level. And so we started talking and, you know, it took a, a couple, three times of, of meeting each other. And finally, it was either he or maybe it was I that said, hey, wait a minute, do you want me here? And did he say, hey, would you want to join us? Uh, I wasn't really ready to jump back into the space yet, um, but there's so many great things in, uh, going on here at Buildium that I decided to. And the fact that Buildium, again, was focused on small to medium business uh, was something that really attracted me because this is where I get my passion from the small business folk. And the fact that it was then focused on one, let's say, vertical instead of hundreds, uh, that being property management uh, on the residential side, uh, I jumped in. So, so I joined a couple of years ago as the chief customer officer. And for that, I was responsible for sales, marketing, um, partners, uh, support and success, and did that for the next kind of year, year and a half or so. And, and around that time, Michael and I started talking about uh, Michael looking to transition out of the CEO role because he'd been the CEO since founding. And that was what, 12 years or so. Uh, and, um, we started talking and last July, we went through the transition. So I've now been the CEO, uh, since last July and I'm loving every minute of it. Cool. And so what's he up to now? 
Uh, Michael and Dimitri, our other founder, uh, uh, are both advisors here at Buildium. So Dimitri has a couple other things going on, but he's here a couple of days a week helping us out with some of the uh, larger kind of initiatives that we have going on. And Michael is here a couple of days a week uh, advising me, the rest of the exec team. They're both active board members for Buildium. It's just great having them both here because it just adds to that continuity, builds on the history. Uh, you know, I can turn to him and say, hey, this customer that's been around for 10 years, you know, how did how did we get them and and what were their things that they were looking to do 10 years ago? So then when I went and would go and meet them, I know the history that they've had with Buildium and how we've helped them grow. Yeah, great. So, um, so the topic that we had discussed discussing or that we have down is homes, not houses. And so yeah. let's let's get into that. So what um what what do you mean by homes not houses yeah it's great it's a great question so i i'm sure as many people know buildium is in the residential uh space as far as helping property managers with their platform with our platform to manage their properties manage their uh, leases and tenants and their units uh also on the accounting side right and through that, obviously, we, we have 16,000 customers. Uh, we're managing on the platform about 1.8 million uh, units. And through that, we have the ability to not only talk and speak with our customers in the residence, but also because of our partnership with NARPUM and a few other things, we do a ton of research. And we have most certainly seen over the past couple of years this trend where the idea of the importance of relationships between the property management firm and their residents has really taken on a new and different light where relationships have become so, so important. Uh, and as part of that, the realization that regardless of if you rent or if you buy a home, you know, everyone is looking for the same thing. Even when you are a renter, you are actually looking for a place that you can call home. So the idea of referring to this as a rental property or a rental unit in the minds of the resident, they're really looking to understand and get that feeling of, hey, I'm going to call this home. And why are they doing that? Because frankly, a lot of, there's many trends that are going on, both at the, let's say, the in the millennial segment, as well as in the upper segments of the baby boomers, where this idea of the American dream, where it used to represent home ownership, no longer really stands for that. It's the, it's the whole idea yeah. that I just want to find a home. So what by calling it a home and not a house, what we're trying to do is bring that idea of belonging and bring that idea of where can I put my roots down just for the fact that I didn't sign a mortgage and I have a rental agreement doesn't mean that my aspirations are different somehow. And because of that, property management firms should really take that idea really as far down the road as they can and understand that they have to be service oriented, they have to be relationship focused and this idea sometimes of looking at residents or your owners or your your vendors in somewhat of a adversarial way is is no longer something that you can do if you really want to be a successful 21st century property management firm yeah no that makes a lot of sense so i think um you know i think part of the challenge is that nowadays you know, millennials and the younger generation, I think a lot of them see like home ownership as a burden. They see it as a tether in a lot of situations. Um, they, you know, we live in a day and age in which people can work from coffee shops yeah. and, you know, they can have freedom and they can travel and, uh, you know, and jobs change. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's no longer the age or day and age where people will say, stay in the same career sometimes for just 20 years, you know, yeah, exactly. and um, so, and when things are changing, they, they want to be able to move. I think also um, one of the reasons I've always enjoyed renting uh, was I didn't have to do the maintenance stuff. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to have to deal with that. So I either have to hire a house manager to manage the, the property for me, or I have a property manager that helps manage those things for right. me, but I don't want to have to deal with that. My right. time is far better spent on my business with my family, like those kind of things. And that's just not a priority for me. I don't Correct. get any sort of kick out of doing that stuff. So, 
Exactly. And that's not only so 100% on the millennial side and the idea that even though they may only be at a, in a resident for a year or two years, again, they still want to have that strong feeling of being able to call this their home. The same thing is on mm-hmm. for different reasons, though, is on at the baby boomer generation. So here we now have, you know, this generation who are quickly becoming, you know, empty nesters left, right and center. And they now have really no more great use for the, the large house that they have in the suburbs. And they have all this space. Again, to your point, they no longer want to have to clean it every week and they no longer want to maintain this beautiful house. Um, and so what they're doing is actually selling their houses. And we're seeing a, a big trend of like, for example, there's a brand new neighborhood just here in Boston that has just grown over the past decade or so called the seaport. Um, and many empty nesters are moving into the seaport and renting. And actually they're renting it with some leases that some of the leases are almost renting at will, um, you know, a three month lease, a half year lease for the same reasons that you talked about. They want to now travel. They want to have that flexibility that should they want to pick up and explore another part of the country or another country altogether, they don't want to be burdened. I love you said tethered down by by the fact that they're carrying this mortgage. Um, that is changing on the top end as well. The interesting thing that binds these two segments together, these two parts of our industry together, is they're both asking for technology. They're both asking for technology uh, with their property management companies for automation of payments, understanding, hey, if I have a burst pipe, I don't want to have to call, but rather perhaps tell Alexa that there's a burst pipe or use the <laughs> uh, portal to put in their maintenance requests. And even though many people look at millennials and, and baby boomers, it's quite different. And on many cases, they are. There's a huge intersection in the property management space that both of these segments share. Uh, and the largest one that we're seeing, well, there's two. One, again, it's around technology, and then the one of demanding a really strong relationship with their property management firm and actually moving away from even using the word landlord because there's just so much baggage in that in that word. But saying my property management company or my property manager, it, it really works to, to strengthen the relationship that they're looking to have. So let's talk a little bit about the language then, because I think that does matter. I think um, you're right. The, the, the word landlord has always been displayed or, the, you know, the archetype of the landlord is this, this sort of evil person that you have to pay rent to and that doesn't take care of things. I mean, this is what you'll see in shows. They're all, often this great antagonist, you know, exactly. in, in <laughs> virtually any show. Um, so what sort of language because we're, we're talking about, you know, homes, not houses. So how do we, free, how, what sort of language should a property manager be using? How should we be rephrasing this to be, make things a bit more tenant friendly um, and shifting towards being more appealing towards uh, rent residents? Yeah, exactly. So that's it. That, that last word you just used. So, uh, so we strain and, and really speak with our property management customers about the idea of, resident versus tenant so you know resident is you know, there's just there's you know meaning a deeper meaning around resident as opposed to you know a kind of it's kind of lacking emotion the, the word tenant um we also talk of we just you know it's the title of what we're talking about here today wherever you have that opportunity use the word home as opposed to unit you know unit is so devoid of any emotion um you know that hey here, even if it's a, even if it's a rental apartment or even if it's a multifamily property, um, talking when you're talking with the resident, talk of, talk it in the sense of their home, and the idea of partnership. You know, we talk looking for a deeper relationship uh, amongst all of the different constituents that a property management company uh, works with. Instead of looking at it as us and them, you talk about the partnership. So the partnership that you have together with your vendors, uh, the maintenance vendor, your service, your service partners, the partnership that you have with your with your owner. So really getting away from, again, that adversarial type of thing and being being deliberate about using this language and taking the time to kind of check yourself as a property management uh, firm to make sure you're using that language that pulls your constituents or your partners in as opposed to setting up that wall between you and your resident, you and your vendor, or you and your owner. 
Got it. I've heard some property managers joke that um, calling your clients um, your owners has this, they've joked that it has this psychological negative impact because if you're calling somebody your owner, they own you. You're yeah. like a slave to them. <laughs> yeah, so no, you just might... reminded me of another one. Uh, definitely that idea of client versus versus owner uh, and then, you know, tenant versus resident. Uh, and instead of maintenance, you know, service partners, uh, instead of, you know, this is my, you know, landscaper or roofer. Yeah, I like the idea of service partners instead of just vendors. Yeah. Which sounds pretty cold. So, um, all right. So we've addressed several target audiences here that are connected to property management. We, you know, uh, tenants instead of our residents, um, owners instead of our clients, vendors instead of service partners. Um, are there any other groups that we're missing here? No, and then I think just even the property, you know, yes, it's language, but it's also if you look at the property management firm uh, itself, there's a mindset shift that needs to happen, right? And it's that idea of being service oriented and being uh, understanding that you're working, if you get that service orientation, you're going to have stronger relationships and you're going to then hopefully have residents who stay, stay in your properties longer uh, so then not having to deal with the you know turnover expense and the constant in and ins and outs and just building that that uh, that re those those bo those bonds and ultimately again building the the language with that mind shift um, you know we have customers that are just living into this idea and not only are they growing um, because they start to get a reputation for this and we know in our space word of mouth is so important. Um, that they're, they're seeing people coming to them and saying, hey, I've heard that you really are doing some things different and you really are looking to help with a service pers perspective. And on top of that, you're really using some cool technology that helps build on the relationships. You know, uh, this idea that technology taking out the human factor uh, is, is not what we, are, what we are talking about. Being a technology vendor, some people are somewhat surprised to hear that. We look at technology being the enabler to be to help people and firms become more efficient, uh, so that they then have the time to be able to focus on building these relationships and making sure they're so service oriented, and making sure, frankly, that they're differentiating themselves from everybody else in the pack. Yeah, I think that's a really important distinction. And I mean, going back to what you're talking about, you're talking about. Uh, with residents, with clients, service partners, you're talking about just in general being a more respectful company, honoring other people, um, caring about other people. And I really believe that uh, property managers have a massive uh, network. They have a massive ripple effect between all the owners, all the tenants, all the different people that they connect with. Um, and, you know, even potential residents, they, they're able to have quite a big influence. And it could be lots of little uh, micro interactions that are negative, and it can be lots of micro interactions that are positive. That little shift, um, even in language and, and little things, I really believe that, uh, and this is what gets me excited about our, our company, DoorGrow, and the impact that we get to have through our clients, but I really believe that good property management can change the world. Good property I completely management. believe that. I'm with you 100%. That's so great. <laughs> so good property management can change the world. Bad property management can change the world industry. <laughs> yes. And it can have a massive ripple effect either way. And yeah. so. Yeah. Well, think about this. So, you know, to your point, um, driving in, if you're commuting somewhere, we know that, you know, property management firms love to have the banners and love to have the advertising. You know, this building is managed by so-and-so. And. -so. and if they have a bad reputation, you know, people that are even maybe two, three or four kind of degrees away from that actual company, there's a good chance that they know of that reputation. And so even though I'm not directly, you know, involved in XYZ property management firm, when I drive into Boston every morning, I know of folks, those that aren't even our customers, I know the reputation that they have. Um, and I think that's a good example of that ripple effect. Uh, and they're always out there, right? They're always, you see, you can't miss those banners. Um, and so there's just this constant on of this advertising for these property management firms um, that they, if they don't have that great reputation to back it up, uh, like you said, uh, it can, it can impact them pretty, pretty directly. 
I think it's it's and it's even bigger than that. And I want everyone listening to realize this that like a lot of property managers I talk to, they say, Well, we started our company because there weren't any good companies in our market, or they'll tell me we're the only good one, all the other ones are terrible. Yeah. And and but everyone says that. Yeah. And so what's funny or what's interesting is I think there's this some people have this mindset of scarcity that I think has been falsely created in this industry. I mean, we, in single family residential, according to the iceberg report, we've got about 70 percent that are self-managing. There's tons yeah. of blue ocean, tons of available potential market share. And yet everybody's been fighting over the coldest, like worst, most difficult leads. And I think the thing to realize is that there's so much there's there really isn't scarcity right now. In the, in the U.S., there really is not. And the thing that I really want listeners to pay attention to is that the companies that have bad reputations in your market are hurting your ability to grow right. your company. Right. Because of that, the awareness level is low and the perception level is low, and those two things are impacting your ability to grow. Right. And so I think what the industry really needs right now is collaboration over competition, yeah. and collaboration allows you to feel safe helping your competitors. Because if you, a rising tide raises all ships is sort of true, but it sinks some because the tide is low, <laughs> you know, I think in the industry as a whole, and some of those ships are not seaworthy and they'll sink. Yeah. But I think if you can lift up the ones that are seaworthy and uh, there's gonna be a lot more business to go around and the ones that are at the top promoting the industry are gonna be the ones that win. Anytime there's a new business category in the US, um, the person that, builds the category instead of their own individual brand is the winner. Yep. Google built the category of internet search. Now we Google everything, whether you're on any other search engine, I'm going to Google it. Um, Kleenex built the category of paper facial tissue, disposable facial tissue. Everyone was using Kleenexes before that. And now, I mean, was using um, handkerchiefs, handkerchiefs before that. Yes. So now Kleenex is synonymous with any tissue. I, can you give me Kleenex? And so Property management has been held back, I believe, and has a huge opportunity to grow. It's been around for decades, but the problem is the awareness level is on par with new, brand new industries. Like, and I don't even know of any other new industries that exist in the U.S. that are as, as young or in relevant, relevant, like, you know, reputation and perception and and that sort of infancy. Um, other than maybe like marijuana and vaping and, you know, these kind of things. And property management can be as big, I think, as the real estate industry. It has that potential. Like we barely scratched the surface. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It's funny that you use the, the all, you know, the all the boats rising because we talk about that all the time here at, at Buildium. We talk about the idea that this, you know, this industry is ripe for so many things as far as growth and a little bit of disruption as far as you know technology adoption and it's all for the idea of bringing that human element back into the into the uh, or not back but introducing i guess the true human element into the industry for this idea that everyone who really buys into that is then going to rise up because as you say i think there is enough pie for everybody um it's it's really interesting when we're at either some of our meetups or some of the you know we're at narpum there is a real camaraderie around those folks. And you can almost tell those folks that have really been successful around this idea of understanding it's the strength of relationships that count. Why? Because they're not threatened by the other property management firms because they know that their relationships are solid and that their residents and that their clients and that their partners, their, their service partners are going to stay with them because they know the reason that they're going to stay with them. So they don't mind talking with, with other PMCs because they know that they're solid in their business. Uh, and, and we're really working here to try to bring that element, obviously, in addition to the technology, but there is a change that needs to happen. And it's not, frankly, it's not just a, hey, we think you should change. What we're saying is we 100% believe and know and have evidence that people who take this idea of service orientation this idea of relationships matter and using technology to get to those two. We know it works because we have so many, again, we have 16,000 customers and we have so many of them that are successful who have bought into that entire idea. Um, and what do they have? They have happy long-term residents, they have happy clients, and they have happy service partners that aren't going to go anywhere else because they know that they're in it together. Um, and, and that's what we're looking to really continue to help and, and help the entire industry here. 
which is really exciting to your point. It's really, there's an opportunity here that not too many industries have. We, we have seen research that says that the property management industry is the third highest industry in interaction with constituents, let's say, you know, because they have to deal with residents and they have to deal with their clients and they have, that idea of total interaction and ongoing interaction with these people, it's the third highest. What are the other two? Hospitality and retail. So that's pretty mm-hmm. good company that they're in. And hospitality and retail understand that relationships matter. And now it's the time for the third person or the third set in this industry to realize that. Yeah, that's that's really an interesting, you know, little factoid right there. So, well, let's let's go back to what what you had mentioned earlier. You're talking about tech enables you to spend more time on relationships. So I think there is this this um, this mythical creature that everybody's chasing after that looks like this robot that will run their business for them. They can cut out relationships and yeah. they can have this business that runs itself and it like it it could be super easy. And I think. I think when we chase that mythical creature, we end up chasing a pipe dream and it becomes really difficult and we alienate ourselves from our customer base. And I think um, I think that's an important thing to point out what you had mentioned earlier that the whole point of, and I love technology. I'm a total nerd. Same. I love it. Same. I love automation. I love geeking out on this stuff. But the whole goal of all of it, everyone needs to remember the core principle that it's about your customer. Right. It's all about giving your customer more depth. And so I think instead of go, trying to do hit more people more superficially, more quickly, that we need to figure out how to go more deep and more personal and connect more with more people. And if if that becomes the focus, then we can leverage technology and automation to take care of the mundane while we focus on the relationships and getting as personal and as deep as possible. I've noticed that a general rule I give to my team that if anything is a sticky or difficult communication or situation or somebody's not happy, we want to go as personal as possible. The most personal would be in person. Second most would be a video call like this. Third would be, um, you know, maybe a phone call. But it needs to be as personal as possible because it just calms the situation down. It makes things easier. And really, that's what people want. People want to be taken care of. And a business only exists if it's serving somebody and right. if it's solving their problems and their right. pain. That's the only reason a business exists. So you cut yourself off from the customer. You're really killing the, your ability to have a business. Right. Uh, do you want to come and do our copywriting? Because, uh, you know, you're hitting on every single part <laughs> that, of things that are just so fundamental to to what we believe here at Buildium. Um, so. Yeah, you are. What, I don't know where to start. So, uh, the idea of using technology for technology sake, sake is a non-starter. The idea yeah. of using technology, as you talked about, to serve something, and what what we truly believe, after talking with our customers and understanding the industry, we truly believe that using technology leads to the greater efficiency that offers you the ability to then spend your time where you can and where you should from an important business perspective. And there are two things. The efficiency brings your ability to spend time with, again, your various partners, your clients, and your and your residents to really get to know them, to really understand them, to really interact with them. Because now you don't have to be chasing them for, let's say, the rent payment, because that's automated. You don't have to be chasing them for understanding their tasks, their needs from a maintenance perspective, because that's automated. Rather, what you need to ch- talk with them about is, hey, am I meeting your expectations to help you build this home, this idea of a home? Hey, am I meeting your expectations as my client? Hey, how can we think of this, of growing this business together? And that's the second part. Efficiencies, then the second part is how do I look to grow my business? Um, you know, if, if your goal as a property management firm is to continue to expand, uh, that takes a lot of time. That takes a lot of effort. You really need to understand, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, what type of properties you, you're really good at, what types of residents you really want to have, what type of clients you really want to uh, get in business with, that's not something you can just do kind of haphazardly. You have to work at it. You have to plan at it. And if you're not focused on, as you said, those things that can be repeated and processes that can be automated, um, that gives you the time to really think of your business strategically to continue to help grow. So you are in a directive fashion going after 
and driving how you want to grow your business. So you're growing your business and your business isn't growing in spite of you or growing at you. you you're taking control of it uh, and you're working in a methodical way now to grow your business and become more efficient. Yeah, um, you mentioned something that uh, stood out to me uh, talking about strategic time. And this is one of the first things we have clients do when they come on board with us is we have them do a time study to get really clear on how much strategic time they're spending in the business and how much tactical time. <laughs> and usually their strategic and tactical ratio is almost like 99% tactical. It's yep. like everything is completely tactical, <laughs> which means you're, you're just doing work in the business. You're handling right. emails, you're doing phone calls, you're dealing with your calendar. Like it's just, you're just working and a business can't grow if there isn't strategic time. Strategic time is the time you spend to focus on growth. Right. And if that doesn't exist, you won't be growing. I think another thing that's important to point out is you talked about how customer relationship, you know, customer service and relationships really matters. And I think one thing to point out that I think a lot of property managers listening, and I've talked to hundreds of property management business owners that they want to do good customer service. They want to be the good company. Nobody, I don't think any of them wake up in the morning and say, I want to be terrible to tenants and I want to be terrible to my owners and provide terrible customer service. But I think one of the big things holding them back is that the entire industry is addicted to the SEO lottery. Yeah. And the SEO lottery is a losing game for the majority, but you get a few noisy winners that hit the jackpot and they tell everybody how they built their business and grew things and they got the top spot on Google and everybody chases after this 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 myth or this you know this thing like they're playing a slot machine in Vegas and it, it's harmed the entire industry because if a company is spending their hard earned revenue on SEO, pay per click, pay per lead, content marketing, social media marketing and they're not getting an ROI, then the first thing to go is customer service. Yeah. Because they're worse off than if they had just not spent the money in the first place. Yeah. because they didn't get an ROI. And so then first thing to go is that customer service. And so they're not growing. So if there isn't growth, they're not going to, there isn't going to be customer service. So if anybody's listening, shameless plug, um, talk to door grow. We help people get out of that problem. <laughs> and then you can move. And I find when people solve that problem, the next thing they want to focus on is everything else. They want to focus on systems and processes and building a team and creating culture and focusing on their customer and making it, and then they get into making a difference. But when you're starving, you're not too focused on anybody else. I think they, uh, old proverb, Chinese proverb says, you know, your own toothache is more important to you than a million people dying on the other side of the world or something like that. So <laughs> I've heard that one, but that's pretty interesting. <laughs> I may, no, have, I, I may I... have adapted it, but <laughs> <laughs> So I agree with you. I think uh, I agree with you to, uh, let's say, 99%. Um, and the reason being is because we're also, as part of the, the growth aspect of, of what we offer, and I think what uh, the industry likes is that uh, we do have the all property management side of our business. However, I'm going to caveat that with that, there is a massive impact of relationship and reputation in that side of the business as well. Why? because you have prospective clients going to that side and going to that marketplace and ultimately being exposed to local property management firms because they are interested in uh, you know, having somebody, having a third party manage their properties for a myriad reasons as to why they no longer wanna self-manage. Um, there is a reputation and relationship aspect that plays into that exposure as well. Because again, it kind of goes back to the banners on the side of the building ad that I talked about. When you are exposed to potentially these, you know, whatever, three, four, whatever other property management firms, if you have a good reputation, I will contend that that owner probably has heard about you. If you have mm -hmm. a bad reputation, they probably have heard about you as well, and they immediately are going to discount you. If yeah. you have a good relation, a good reputation, and they see that, okay, this this property management firm has said, yes, I, I'm open to looking to get more uh greater um, properties under management, they're going to turn to that one that they have a little inkling as far as, oh yeah, I've heard that that this is a good firm. And so I, I agree with you about the, the vast majority of what we just talked about. However, reputation and relationships even matter in that space too. So regardless of value of Absolutely. all of the different channels, it's not binary, right? It's not the idea of, oh, I can just, to your point, I'm just going to focus on this execution aspect and not sure. this stuff over here, because this stuff over here is also going to matter in whatever marketing channel or marketing activity you use. 
Absolutely. So if somebody shores up all the major leaks that exist in the sales pipeline, all the way from awareness to closing a contract, then it makes sense absolutely to do different advertising methods, all property yep. management. Yep. But yeah, if you have a massive leak where you've got this horrible reputation online or you've got your website doesn't you know, create trust or convert or answer their core questions, or you've got, um, you know, your pricing is off in your market or um, your branding is off. Like they think you're a real estate company or something generic like properties or they're confused. I mean, there's a lot of potential pitfalls. If you have all those pitfalls, you can turn the spigot on full blast and it's not going to work very well. And mm -hmm. if you have those things tight, you can squeeze blood from a stone like, and you can get, you can use all property management.com. You can do SEO services and focus on that and maybe uh, get, uh, get more business. But yeah, you need to make sure that you, um, and the foundation of it, like you said, is, is word of mouth and reputation yeah. and, and, and that's going to trump everything. Yeah. It's like a clamp on the pipeline. If you could have everything else in alignment, but if you have really bad reputation, they're going to check you out. Yeah. Even if your website's amazing, even if your um, your advertising and copywriting are on point, that if they they're going to go check you out because they want to feel safe. And if you're like a one star company, they're going to feel a little bit nervous talking to you. And then you're going to have to figure out how to spin it. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, the tenants just hate us, but yeah. we're we're owners love us, you know, or something like that. You know, this is uh this is something from a small business perspective that it it's all uh, you know it's not only in property management, but it's everywhere. It's that idea, and I think what you're saying is, you know. Um, shoring up your business model before you pour, you know, a ton of gas on the top of what we call the funnel. Right. Uh, and I can't tell you the number of not only property management firms, but, you know, owners from all different types of SMBs, you know, you, you, when you start to talk with them and they, they want to do that top of funnel stuff, they want to do all of that. Cause sometimes that's more attractive and kind of even more sexy type of activities, you know, about growing your business. But then sure. when you go, okay, well, are you, are you going to be able to keep that? Are you going to be able to get, uh, you know, uh, respond to that lead within a matter of minutes? Are you going to be able to service that that prospect all the way through? And then are you going to be able to keep that prospect be, uh, if they become a customer for a long time because your whole service? Yeah. And that's when you start to see the holes start to, no, I can't do that. No, I, I can't follow up. I don't really understand that. I don't really have yeah. good service levels. It's it's very hard for for folks to you know say wow that would be a waste of money actually to to really expand my top of funnel work until I yeah. get like you just said everything short up when that happens man you know it and you can you know yeah. for us here we talk about the ladder of autonomy it's kind of a pithy phrase but you know companies that are just existing are at the bottom of the ladder but custom customers that have this level of autonomy because they have all their you know what together they understand their business they understand their customers they understand their message they understand the differentiator they're working at a completely different level than other folks in their in their industry um, notably on the property management side and and our whole goal is to get everybody up to that top level on the ladder um, so everyone again we think will benefit from it the ripples the network effect that you talked about is going to be there and who's yeah. going to benefit as well residents clients and service partners yeah and i think you know that's why at dorgra we shifted our focus just to helping optimize that that's great that whole that whole awesome. funnel um, so that makes sense because at once you have that dialed in everything is more effective yeah. APM is more effective paper you know google ads is more effect are more Ooh. effective everything becomes more effective when you take care of those things um, yep. But without those things, it's kind of, I usually use the analogy, it's kind of like trying to do bodybuilding and you're not eating food and sleeping. Right. But you're taking some really great supplements. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> supplements aren't going to cut it, but they, supplements can really help you get to the next level probably if you take care of the foundational basics. And right. yeah, dialing in your brand, your pricing, your, you know, your, your uh, reputation, your website, your sales process, like all these things that are in the funnel, these are the basics. These yeah, are the basics so of any business, like you said. It's so important, Jason. I love that that's your philosophy. It is so, so important. And also everyone here at Buildium is going to be psyched that I said the word funnel a number of times because I talk about it all the time <laughs> here in the company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, I love I love the idea of a funnel. So it's a it's a great metaphor as well. So um all right, cool. So um what 
uh, is there anything else that we should discuss here on um, on this idea of homes, not houses? And if not, let's let's let you plug something. Yeah. So, no, I think we covered it. And I think, again, the idea more and more over the years, I think this is going or we think it's going to become almost a requirement. And those folks that are on, you know, grabbing onto it today, uh, competition is there. Things are things are, you know, hotter than ever. Um, and, and it's not a nice to have anymore. Uh, it's truly just something, you know, other industries have been disrupted through this very same idea. Uh, and now we, we see evidence. We talked with our, we talk with our customers. We talk with general folks that aren't even our customers, uh, in the industry. Um, and we really see this big wave coming. Luckily, it's also a cool time because the technology is there to enable that, that the, the, the way to become more efficient through those processes that you talked about that are, that are more on the just everyday ongoing type of things. Uh, all technology is there now to really allow this to, to happen. And it's, a, and it's an exciting time. It's an exciting, exciting time to be a vendor, it's an exciting time to be a service provider in the space as you guys are, um, uh, to see where it really goes. Uh, you know, prop tech, every, you know, it's just a, and just the whole property management uh, industry is, is pretty hot right now. And, um, and we're just so psyched. I'm psyched to be a part of it. It's really exciting. So, Chris, it's been great having you on the show. I'm really, I feel like we have a lot of synergy. I really like you as you strike me as a visionary entrepreneur and, you know, somebody, I mean, you're a decade building up constant contact. I mean, all, all this kind of stuff. So not every company is led by a visionary. So it's like not, and I think I always feel safer with a company that is led by a visionary entrepreneur. Well, that's why I use T-Mobile. That's why I have Apple products. Like I feel like, you know, there's always been these visionaries at the helm of these companies. And so, um, so one thing I wanted to point out that to plug building or make them look maybe a, a, even better is um, some property management software out there. Some of your competitors, they're more focused. You know, we've been talking about all about being focused on the customer, being focused on your customer, serving your customer. And we've been talking about that for property management companies, but I, I'm getting the sense that this is how you, you and your company view dealing with your own constituents, your own customers, that you want to serve their needs and make a difference for them and not just squeeze a dollar out of them. 100%. So, and thanks for asking, because it is. And, and to, to that point, some companies, their focus primarily, first and foremost, is to serve investors. There's a different focus there instead of serving their constituents. Yeah, and I think they've been there's been a lot of talk about this and a lot of pain with by people in some other property management software, and it's really difficult to switch. So maybe you could touch on that difference a little bit with Buildium, and sure. maybe you can tell us how does somebody switch this? You know, because somebody might, listening might be like, "Hey, maybe I like this guy Chris. I'd rather have him at the helm of this, this where I'm, you know, tethering my whole business to." Yeah, I hope there's a lot of people that have that reaction. Uh, so it is you hit it is a core foundational uh, reality that we love here at Buildium. It's something that Michael and Dimitri started years ago. It's something that I 100% believe in. I think that's why uh, Michael and I hit it off so well so quickly. Uh, it's it's actually the core essence of every single Buildium, uh, and there's more than 200 of us now. Uh, that believes in. We do not believe that we are going to be a a hundred year company who changes the face of property management um, if we if that's not at our core. And it is. Um, there's a reason why we believe that that customer success and customer support is not a, a function in a company, but it's everybody. It's also there's also a reason to believe that we'll stay on the phone with customers for however long they need it. Uh, again, there's you know property management on the accounting side. It's pretty involved, and we're not talking about accountants, right? And so we will stay on the phone, and we will we will write out the basic T accounts and say, "Here's your debit. Where's the credit?" Well, and we will walk them through that. Why? Because it leads to that relationship, and then it leads to that idea that those our customers are going to stay with us longer. They're not going to think about jumping, even if it's a cheaper price or less expensive uh, offering. And they're going to tell their friends. Word of mouth in this space is so important as it, as it is for our customers. It's so important for us. Um, it is. This is not corporate baloney. 
that we're talking about. Um, it is something Absolutely. that we talk at every single company meeting. It's talked about every single functional meeting. Uh, we have people listening to our phone calls all the time. We have people out in the field. Employees are out in the field meeting with customers. Uh, you got to fly to California, go fly to California. It's going to pay off with that lifetime relationship that we end up with, with our customers. And, and, you know, how can people switch and how, if they are interested in getting to know me, cmlitster at, at buildium.com, just email me, uh, you know, get a hold. We have our, our, our standard customer success or support line is on buildium.com. Um, but I have, you know, I have literally dozens, hundreds even of customers that I know personally uh, that my the rest of my executive team and leadership team and the and all of the buildings, you know, we have we know these these customers. And just because we're 16,000 strong uh, doesn't mean that you're just a number uh, because we will be here for anything that you need. Uh, be it, you know, we just had customers up here the other day. Uh, like we're in a brand new office, which is great because we grew out of our other one. And we spent the nice. you know, whole day with these customers, uh, just answering whatever questions and doing whatever we can to do. Um, it is a core, core element of what makes Buildium, Buildium. And to your point, I, we 100% believe it sets us apart from the pack. It sets us, it creates space between us and other folks. Um, and frankly, we're only gonna build on it. And frankly, we're only gonna make it better. So that space is just gonna get bigger and bigger because and again, thank you for the visionary aspect, because I think also other folks are focused on just the technology. It's all product. We have a very good to great product that already throws a ton of a ton of value at our customers that is only continuing to get better. And we're investing heavily in it, but we're also investing heavily in the relationship side. Uh, and it's something that we have the ability to continue to grow and make even stronger. Um, and it's not something that's going to go away as we continue to expand. I'll also say we have investors too, and those investors couldn't be more supportive of our vision, our mission, and the alignment we have around the idea that it's the customers first always. And so makes my job easier from a board perspective because they're actually pushing yeah. me probably even more to make sure we don't lose that, uh, which is fantastic. And that will always be, um, you know, 100 years from now, I won't be here but I know the idea of customer first always at Buildium will be. Love it. Chris, I'm really excited to, co to connect and get to know you a little bit better and hear more yeah, about Buildium. Awesome. Thank you so much. And appreciate you coming on the show. Um, and uh, where can people find Buildium? So Buildium.com. So B-U-I-L-D-I-U-M.com. And they can find me at C-M-L-I-T-S-T-E-R at buildium.com. Perfect. All right, Chris, thanks so much for coming out. Jason, we want to have you come up to Boston and see our nice new offices and spend some time. Yeah, with us. you'll have to have me come out. I'll check it out. Love it. We'll hang out. Yeah, it'd be great. All right. we'll, we'll talk shop. All right, cool, Chris. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, man. We'll talk to you. All right, great. It was great having Chris on. So if you are a property management entrepreneur that wants to add doors and you want to make a difference and you, you know, some of the things in the show kind of hit a pain point for you, then make sure to reach out to Door Grow. We would love to connect with you. Um, we also have a really clear vision that we want to transform this industry and make a difference. Um, it's not just hype for us. Like that's what gets me fired up and excited. So, and uh, the clients that are closest to me, they know that. And, uh, and that's why I do what I do. It's super rewarding to, and fun for me to hang out with other entrepreneurs. Really enjoyed doing this. Uh, conversation with Chris and um, make sure to check us out at DoorGrow. And if you are not in our Facebook group and you want to be part of a community where we the, the tide is raising all the ships, make sure you get into the DoorGrow Club. Go to DoorGrowClub.com. It's a Facebook group. It will redirect into Facebook and uh, DoorGrowClub.com. And it is free, but it's only for property management entrepreneurs. And so if you are an entrepreneur in the space, you are a business owner, you have a company, or you're looking to start one, uh, make sure you join join our group and start getting plugged in. So thanks for tuning in. Until next time, to our mutual growth. Bye, everyone.